In today's episode of RV Dare Yet, we will introduce you to our new rig, Claire Marshall II. We will take you to Cowpens National Military Battlefield Park and uh, talk about a little Revolutionary War history. And we'll talk about our recent transition to full-time RV living. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a woman. Guarding her, her stuff. Guarding her stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it just got real. Just got real. Yep, it just got real. The final day. The last final day of junk. <laughs> Marshall II. She is a 2003 Airstream Land Yacht XL396 40 foot diesel pusher. For those of you just joining the channel, we name our rigs after Maureen's late mother, who was an avid RVer. So our first one was Claire Marshall. This is Claire Marshall II. A uh, Cat 3126, nice big tanks, slides on the inside. Once we get the inside put together a little bit more, we'll do an inside tour. But we really like her so far. I think she's going to be a lovely home for us. One of the reasons we picked a Class A when we decided to go full-time is because of the basement storage. And this is the curbside. have tools in one bay. Second bay is all your uh, patio stuff. It's on a slide out tray. Comes out, makes it easy to load and unload. Third bay is all our outdoor cooking, charcoal, Dutch oven, uh, fire pit, that sort of thing. Then we have uh, a bay down there for a outside TV. And we also use it for storing some chemicals. One other thing the previous owner did was installed a 2500 watt pure sine wave inverter which allows us to safely use computers use this nice clean power for the computer it'll also run the refrigerator on the inverter while we're on the road go ahead this is the basic layout of the of the national battlefield there's a visitor center and there's a loop road um, that shows you significant areas around through here and in the middle is green river road that i spoke about earlier it's a very very nice place um, very wooded lots of picnic areas yeah. it's a very very nice day trip if you're happening to be here in the uh, gafty area mm -hmm. pretty much anybody that's coming here for freightliner service uh this will yeah. be a nice oh, nice yeah. day trip absolutely it's about five miles from the campground all right all right thank you Okay, so here's the basic setup of the of the battle. This is Green River Road. This was uh, the road that actually led over toward Kings Mountain, where the the Battle of Kings Mountain that I spoke about earlier was fought. <clears throat> the the colonial militia had come from the Kings Mountain area to this area, and had turned to make a stand here at at Calpins. They had sent word out to the other areas for other over mountain men to come to Calpins. And since they had camped here on their way to Kings Mountain, it would have been a very easy way to identify where to go to. I see, okay. okay. I said earlier that, uh, that Morgan anticipated that Tarleton would be impulsive, and he was. He launched right into a headlong attack. This is your First line of colonial militia here, these first in blue. Morgan told them to shoot their two volleys and then retreat back to this Pickens militia line. The sharpshooters start taking out the, the British uh, officers. Tarleton 
launches a, a they call it dragoons, which is basically a British word for cavalry. You get a picture, this is men on horseback with sabers uh, attacking, retreating infantry. Okay. So it strikes terror in the hearts of militia, they're non-professional office, mm -hmm. uh, non-professional soldiers. But the combination of uh, the lack of leadership and the fact that uh, all of this power was in reserve for Morgan allowed him to basically entrap the British on two sides and force them to retreat, which is how the colonial militia, which is just a bunch of country boys, beat right. the troops of the, the greatest super. superpower in the world at that time. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh boy, we are at a beautiful day. <laughs> yeah, and this is the first day in like the longest oh, time. It feels like feels forever. like forever that we haven't been dealing with boxes and cleaning and hauling right. and storing and purging and hauling right. and cleaning and storing. Right. So it feels really good. It feels awesome. <laughs> I can't believe we have started yeah. this journey. Yeah. I'd say it was two months ago. I mean, yeah, uh, it's kind of weird. You know, most people that, you know, we've been watching uh, RV videos for years, years and years. I mean, a lot of the guys that uh, you guys all know, the, the big RV channels, KYD mm -hmm. and Long Long Honeymoon and, right. you know, all these folks. And it seems like everybody spends about a year or so kind of going through and, and making the transition to full time. Mm -hmm. In typical our fashion, it went a little different. We do. <laughs> We we don't do anything. We don't easy. do we don't do anything <laughs> easy. So oh. so we talked about hey you know we should maybe think about going full time. Let's let's list the house and see what happens. Yeah, Ex and we expecting just, that it was going to take months for everything to, to, sell. to sell. But what we didn't count on was the market. <laughs> yeah. So actually, it's, it, it's but it was kind of in a good way. It's a very good way. But. Tell, but, tell them what happened. Well, we we called up our, our real estate agent who actually sold us the house the first time and said, we're, I think we're ready to do this. So um, it took about a week, but by Thursday, that was the, the next day, which was Thursday, she was she put it um, the paperwork in. Um, the house sold before it even hit the MLS. Yeah. So, so uh, Before it ever actually hit the MLS, the house was sold, y'all. Which meant that the good news was the house was sold. We didn't have to worry about it. Well, it was, it was in the, in the but you know process. What I mean. it, it, we had a, we had a signed offer, earnest like, money, the whole thing. Almost Did, immediately. Didn't didn't have to worry about that. The bad news was <laughs> that meant we <laughs> that meant we had to empty the house, sell what we needed to sell, store what we needed, store, to store. what we needed to store. Mm -hmm find an RV to live in, yeah. execute that sale, right. then and get everything onto the RV and get right. settled in, right. all of which had to happen in a 30-day period. Mm -hmm. That was not easy. No. <laughs> Not easy. No, that was that was I that think, was not I easy. Do, it, don't do this. If don't, you, if you, no. don't do it this way if you can no. avoid doing no. it. This it, way. it definitely was one of those. Uh, I probably think one of the most stressful times that we've ever yeah. experienced well, together. Yeah. So let's just say some of it was good stress and some of it was just you know just stress stress. But anyway, <sighs> the the thing for me was there were things that we ended up dealing with that we knew we were going to have to deal with, mm -hmm. like buying the RV. Uh, RV insurance, that sort of thing. We knew we were going to have to do that. Right. But then there were other things that we ended up encountering and having to navigate that we didn't know we were going to have to deal with. And that was, for example, the LLC for the yeah. for the RV. Um, we ended up, uh, for a variety of reasons, business reasons, we established a, a LLC in Montana. So the RV is registered uh, to that. Uh, but that was a whole process that was there. A, it was a suggestion yeah. that I think really um, helped out in uh, the, the ability to save some money. Yeah. So that was, uh, I think, and that was recommended by the buyers yeah. of this RV that we finally picked. Because I think the last time we left our, our previous video, we were 
we were looking in. And yeah, we were looking and we hadn't really found anything. Mm -mm. And but. we ended up finding this RV, this, uh, well, let's back up a second. Yeah. Uh, when we started looking for RVs, we were looking for a, ver a variety of different things. And, and we've spoken before about how there's no RV that is perfect. They all have pluses and minuses. It was very important to us to be able to stay connected to our Carolina's Airstream group. Mm -hmm. We just very, very much enjoy uh, the group. And uh, really didn't feel that the Airstream travel trailer at this time was the right choice for full-time living. Mm -hmm. So the Airstream Class A kind of came to the top of the list. And in typical fashion, they're very rare. They're, they're, yeah. hard, they're hard to find. Right. And we ended up finding one that was relatively close to us in Georgia mm -hmm that had been uh, lovingly, lovingly maintained mm -hmm. uh, by only the second owner and were able to, to negotiate a deal. Uh, and so far I feel it's a really good fit. Oh, it's amazing. And, uh, and previous, I think we had already kind of planned on possibly a, a class A, so we bought a Jeep mm -hmm. and we absolutely have loved it. This Jeep has made the, the transition probably one of the, uh, far easier than if we had done a different tow vehicle. Oh, so, oh, yeah. um, but it is, it is a Jeep Wrangler, uh, Sahara, uh, Sahara? Yeah, Sahara, Sahara. So, um, we are loving that. And now we, we are so excited because we have our first rally, uh, coming up, um, soon and really are excited to share, um, more adventures with yeah. the Airstream community. So, so what would be some of the things you would say went right about this house move out transition, however you want to call it? Well, I think what some things went right. What things went right? I think we were able to already have some of the, uh, the RV, for, you know, stuff. I guess let's call it. Um, we had the grills we've had we well, had the yeah you know, having prior rv experience mm -hmm, was helpful right. because you know what you need you know what you don't need mm -hmm. and, and that saved us from having i think if you didn't have previous rv experience you'd have to go out and purchase all these things and there's a right. tendency to buy things that you maybe don't really need. need anyway so, so that's we were, good that's a good and thing. and i think uh i i feel like we were able to to fit most of our things um well. you know, so I would, I mean, there's this. There's some, there's some interesting things there. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I joked the other day that it doesn't really matter whether you decide to full time in a little guy max or a Prevo H3, you're still going to have to make some yeah. choices and decisions. Right. Some of our choices and decisions <laughs> were a little interesting. And what would you call interesting? <laughs> well, I don't um, know. What do you? I'm, I'm kind of thinking that the flour sifter and oh. the and the pampered chef cheese uh, grater yeah. were kind of I don't interesting I, you know choices. I guess those things that you try to think about using really didn't mean the same in, yeah. in moving on to an yeah. RV because now yeah. we have precious space but and also to me in a plus side is that the Class A um, Airstream is really has a lot more room than we it had, had more before. it has more room than we had with the, the airstream Tra travel trailer the um, the basement storage is really nice the the cabinets it's all airstream on the inside and once we get a little bit more put together i, I told you before we'll, we'll give you an in interior tour uh it has an onboard um, washer dryer so that's which nice. is really nice so so okay so the prior rv experience is a plus mm -hmm. give me another good thing that happened um, oh, well, obviously our, uh, our home sale. Oh gosh, yeah. Our home sale and, and full price it was, contract. It was that's, that's a, a biggie. almost seamless. That's a biggie. Because yeah. I mean, <laughs> you couldn't do it unless. Yeah, because I mean, you kind of take it for granted, but you could have been sitting here for months and months and months right. trying to sell a house in a different market. Right. So that's a plus. Um, I think also plus was the um, Facebook Marketplace. Oh, was, uh, yeah, was a wonderful. Was um, I've never had used it before until now. And so we were able to sell a lot of things that we knew we weren't going to be mm -hmm. able to use again. So that was a really good um, vehicle. If you've, Very you good know, point. it's, it's far better. I felt more comfortable with doing um, that Facebook marketplace than Craigslist or any other. So it gets not mm -hmm. to diss anyone 
that, but the Airstream Marketplace, I mean, sorry, um, Facebook Marketplace was the, I think, catalyst to be able to make us feel like we could well, make it was, this Well, it happen. was a catalyst to be able to sell things and sell them quickly because we had, we had a very tight timeline yeah. to, to deal was... with. And um, what's nice about it is you can make the ads very quickly. They go up just instantly. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody and you can sort of define the area you you want to reach out to mm -hmm. uh one tip i would i would suggest to folks we ended up uh when we actually delivered the item and, and took payment we did that in the uh, parking lot of the police station yep so there in town so it was very safe so it, to make both sides of the transaction feel safe because mm -hmm. you know um unless it was furniture or something really large we we try not to uh, bring you know unknown people to the house yeah. if we don't have to yeah. so yeah facebook marketplace is a definite definitely win. Win. okay yeah. you gotta what, what's what else i don't know you really name one because i've named facebook marketplace so you name one well the house the facebook marketplace uh, finding the the rv uh quickly mm -hmm. and and i would recommend that if you really are considering um going full-time that you uh, consider use. I think we've been watching mm -hmm. a lot of in, uh, very insightful people's opinions on how the industry is moving um, so quickly with, because they can't fill um, orders. Yeah, that, there's a lot, of, a, lot of, of, a lot of stories out there about some kind of shoddy construction because all the, in the, all the companies are under pressure to produce units and right. produce them quickly. And they don't, don't have the staff to yeah. do it. So yeah. consider using, uh, consider buying a used RV. Mm -hmm. And we worked really well with the folks that were selling this um, particular RV. And, um, and actually it was um, a woman about the same age as me, retired, and she used it as her office. Yeah. So she actually drove it, um, really kind of gave me the, the good feeling that, you know, eventually I'll be driving it. Uh, and and well, you have just, a class A CDL. Well, yeah, but it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a it's while. like riding a That's bicycle. That's a whole other story. Driving a tanker, riding a bicycle, same thing. Yeah, all right. Mm. Um, anyway. Okay, so let's talk about things that didn't go well or, or, or could have been maybe a little <clears throat> smoother or... Can we just skip over this part? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I, think, I think it's important. I think one of the things for me, again, if you have the option... I wouldn't have as tight a timeline as we did right. because it was a, kind of a double-edged sword because the, the tight timeline forced you to move move ahead where if you really didn't have that pressure, you might have kind of, right. yeah, just kind of it probably let wouldn't it slide. Have, right. Yeah. But then it also created the, um, the, a bit of chaos yeah. as what you were packing and if... Um, that would yeah what you're going to need what you don't right. need will it fit will it not fit i mean it helped me make decisions a little quicker but um let's just say not everything made it on the let's bus just, yeah let's just say that uh one of us is a minimalist and one of us is is, is, a, is a, 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 an a aspire rack. an aspiring no i prefer aspiring minimalist <laughs> okay I'll, I'll continue to be aspiring aspiring minimalist. yeah i'm gonna have to do that yeah. Um, but really, because it's curious that the flour sifter and the and the pampered chef cheese grater showed up on the rig, but my computer glasses, the power cord for my computer, uh, didn't. Did, <laughs> knee braces. Yeah. Uh, all, curiously, a lot of my stuff didn't, and that's just kind of yeah. I don't know. So, ladies, just, mm. you have to you have to sometimes anyway. make sure you label boxes properly before they're. Yeah. somehow mistakenly disposed of but yeah, and, and I think that um, in retrospect if I if I had it to do over again we would have had a better plan for uh, what's going to get disposed of what's going to definitely go to the rig and what we're definitely right. going to sell because what we ended up doing is handling the same thing two and three times which yeah. was a little bit inefficient um, but I mean, overall, it went. It, it has gone as well as it reasonably could be expected so. to go. Right. I think. Because um, I, I still, I think there's a lot of people out there that maybe would think, as you know, we're transitioning, and people are asking, well, what are you going to do now? Where are you going to live? And it's like, well, we we have got the most incredible um, new home. Mm -hmm. It just has wheels on it. 
Um, it is so comfortable. I would have never expected how comfortable this rig is. Mm -hmm. um, and to really fully embrace the whole um, let go of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm working, again, I'm a work in progress, but it really- Well, for uh, me, it was really the realization that uh, you actually live at work and mm -hmm. you visit your home. That's a good point. Yeah. And, and those things are kind of backwards, honestly. Right. And so that was what really kind of drove us several years ago, actually, mm -hmm. to think about uh, wanting to start full thinking time. about going full time. Yeah. But then events, some of them within our control and some of them right. not sort of drove us to do it to, now. To right. do it now. And, and uh, I think... So I we're think, looking forward to the future. Oh, this is... I think finally getting past the whole... Um, packing, unpacking, which I think we're almost there today. We wanted to share that you're going to have days that are great and you're going to have days that are frustrating because you can't find this, you can't find that. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Well, the good news is it can only be a few places. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> just narrow down. Yeah. yeah. Narrows, narrows but it just down. for. <laughs> but it can't be in the attic. No, no. But we went from one storage unit to two. Yeah. So um, that we're going to work, yeah, we're going to work on that. Yeah, we'll uh, on that. But but in the meantime, we we've done it. We really yeah. So <laughs> anyway, I think uh, it's sort of like jumping out of an airplane. You pack your parachute. You you, you pick your landing zone. Mm -hmm. You hope you prepare. That the you prepare. You hope the person that packed your chute did a good job. But ultimately, you got to step out the door. Right. And so and we, this week landed. we stepped out the door. We stepped out the door and yeah. we've landed. Um, I, I am very excited to um, see what's ahead. And, we, and so far, everything on the bus works. Everything. That is like, that is, I think, another good yeah, thing. Yeah, because, I mean, from our previous RV experience, <laughs> RVing is basically, it's been said before and it's very true, RVing is basically making repairs in pretty places. There you go. Yeah. And that's and, a... Yeah, that's yeah. a good way there's, of looking at it. There's almost always something wrong right. somewhere that you got to take care right. of. Right. But, but so, so far, far, everything works. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. We are... Oh, oh. and shout out to uh, Chris at the Monroe Tire there in Shelby. He is also part of our Airstream uh, community. community. And he came over, inspected our tires. We were fully expecting to have, have, to, to, buy have new to buy ones, new tires. He's a fully qualified Michelin rated tire guru and he came over yeah. and, and spent he gave a, us such a, a, a amazing thorough, thorough examination exam, but the news was the, the tires was great yeah. was that they were all in good shape yeah. um and we were like floored because that is worn yeah. from from day one the uh, owners couldn't really explain how where the tire codes were and so forth but, but we, found them. we found them yeah. and uh it turns out that um, they're in good shape they're for good a while. Yep. So, so that was great. I, that was another positive. That was a very good, a very huge positive. Yeah. So, Okay, so from here, we'll be off to uh, Marion. Well, wait, did we tell everybody where oh, we're at Calpins? Okay, so we're in South Carolina. So next stop is um, we've got a couple yes, we, we are Yes, we are in Gaffney, South, South Carolina, Carolina, at the KOA, mm -hmm. uh, which is close to Freightliner. We, we initially uh, decided to come here because we anticipated having to go to go well we well, anticipated going straight to uh freightliner Freight service center which is because something Gaffney. would have been gone gone so so far that hasn't well we needed to come here for our annual maintenance anyway all oh, right right. right right so whether something was wrong or not right. we were going to have to come to, to freightliner so we made these reservations anticipating that we would be going to freightliner service center and then after we made the reservations, Freightliner Service Center is not available until December. December. So we'll be, so we could, we'll be coming back for oh, we'll annual. We'll definitely be back because this but, is one, a great campground. So So anyway, that's why we're here in, in uh, Gaffney. <laughs> and we'll be leaving here uh, early this week, headed up to Marion, North Carolina. Get ready for a uh, big Airstream rally, Alumalina. It's a fairly large rally there at uh, Tom Johnson Campground in, mm -hmm. in Marion. And... Uh, it's a beautiful time to be up there. The leaves are starting to change. We'll, yeah. we'll uh, share some of that with you. So right. we we'll hope you stick around and, uh, and do stay tuned. And um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get mm -hmm. our updates. And click that the like bell. button, that click the bell uh, for notifications, and also the like button because we really are now fully 
fully ready to um, pass along a lot of good information. Yep. Warren's been such a great history buff. I, I'm gonna, uh, you know, kind of relearn what I didn't remember from, from <laughs> early days. But um, I, we really are excited to share that with you, yep. and uh, looking forward to seeing more events and journeys down the road. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Right. See, See you later. later.